Hello and welcome to episode number 12 of the Alpha Movement Podcast. So today on the show I have probably the biggest guest we've had on yet and his name is AJ Roberts. He'll give you a bit of an intro um, as to himself when he comes on but you should know that that doesn't quite do justice to everything he's, he's achieved. He's been a phenomenal athlete in multiple sports and he's also a hugely successful person in business. So you'll probably notice as well that I'm a bit nervous to begin with. Um, I didn't have very long to prep for the call, but I think it comes across really well. And honestly, you could listen to AJ speaking for 45 minutes without me there. So without further ado, here is Mr. AJ Roberts. For those of you who, or the very few people who don't know who you are, AJ, can you give us a bit of an intro as to who you are and kind of what you've done? Yeah, a bit of a diverse background, I guess, um, and keep it short. I was uh, formerly a professional powerlifter and uh, two-time world record holder in that discipline and um, then went on to lose over 100 pounds and uh, compete in bodybuilding and simultaneously have uh, built and worked with uh, over a dozen uh, seven-figure business and, and one eight figure business um so you know that's the long and short of it and um you know i, I typically help other business owners set insane goals and then uh, smash right through them awesome do you mind if we start at kind of west side because i think that's where you kind of you started to get a bit more well known there so yeah absolutely. yeah go for it sorry yeah, so uh, I uh, was powerlifting and um, you know, I was working in – I took a, a job in Kentucky just to be close to the west side and I would uh, drive over to train at the legendary uh, west side barbell uh, every Friday. I would drive four, hour, four and a half hours there, four and a half hours back and uh, after doing that for a couple of months, Louis just looked at me and said, hey, when are you going to move here? And so uh, I moved, moved to west side and trained there for about four years and, and that's where I uh, broke the world record. Yeah, how was uh, how was training there? Oh man, it is intense. It is, you know, you talk about an environment and surrounding yourself with the right people, and uh, you walk into that place, and uh, you, nothing but the best is expected of you, and uh, you can't give anything but your all. So um, it's uh, you, some say it's the depths of hell, but uh, it's uh, definitely the place to be if you want to get strong, or you know, really for any athlete who who's serious about becoming the very best. Um, there isn't another place on earth that I've been to that's like it. How is that? If you don't mind me probing. Yeah, I mean, you know, the minute you walk in, the expectations are set. You know, you're there to be the very best and and nothing less. And so every every training session you're in there, you you give it 100%. Um, and uh, you, you know, you leave nothing nothing uh, on the platform, nothing in the gym. Um, and uh, you know, you train, you do everything that it takes in order to to be the best. Whether that's gaining weight, losing weight. Um, you know, <laughs> the lifting ridiculous amounts of, of uh, poundages, uh, you know, staying, doing accessories, working out multiple times a day, you know, whatever, whatever you need, you know, that's the place that you'll figure it out. And, uh, you know, being surrounded by other people, people who have uh, achieved what you want to achieve or done what you want to do, um, you know, from world record holders to, you know, individuals who just have set, you, we've had gold medalists there and UFC fighters and all sorts of people there. Um, you know, depending on what you want to achieve, there, there's the, the path is laid before you. And um, all you have to do is show up and put in the work. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a huge part of any goal, kind of turning up and just doing the work. But are there any other kind of, obviously, if you've, you've experienced such success in so many different areas, um, are there any kind of common themes that you've identified between the areas? Uh, I think, you know, most what's funny is, is uh, you don't start to see how the lines are blurred until you really sit back and reflect. And, you know, uh, I just I just made a post about this, but really it comes down to, you know, self-discipline. It comes down to habits and rituals and it comes down to just really this uh, mindset in, in order to, to be, you know, the best and just doing whatever it takes and understanding that you know, there are sacrifices that have to be made. And so, you know, the biggest thing I, I see and whether it's in, in body or whether it's in, you know, like relationships or spiritual or wealth, like whatever category it's in, like you can take your skill set from one and transfer it into the other. And so it's just that self-discipline to show up every day and do the work that's required. And so figuring out what that work is and, and what needs to be done, that that's really, you know, something that you can rely on someone else to help you with. Someone who's already been through or done what you want to do or someone has the relationship you want to have or or has built the business you want want to build. What, what they can't give you is, is that discipline 
discipline and, and, you know, being rigid to a schedule and, and training, you know, we trained every single morning at 8 a.m. That was the schedule. And so, you know, we showed up, we trained, we knew what we we're doing. And then I'd be back again at 4 p.m. You know, how many people treat their business like that? Where they show up and they're actually working on their business, uh, you know, going all, go, going all out, uh, for hours upon hours and then, you know, um, rest, recover from that and then go again. You know, how many people with their diet, you know, eat the same foods every single day, the same times every single day. Where's the discipline in that? You know, with your schedule, you know, are you rigid with your schedule if you're a writer or an artist or, you know, anything? Like, when do you create? Like, what's the creative time? Is it the same time every single day? Do you follow a schedule? Are you strict to that schedule? You know, do you show up on time? Do you answer the phone <laughs> when it, when, you know, uh, when you're supposed to and, and do you deliver on projects when you're supposed to? And so, you know, all of it comes down to is this, this, this basic skill set of, of just, you know, doing what it what needs to be done and being very disciplined in order to do that you know you hear about the traits of the successful and how people get up at 5 a.m and other people are like oh, i just can't get up well no one starts just getting up at 5 a.m you know it's just a discipline that is learned and at first it sucks but you build that that myelin and you just build it up and after a while you know what 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 sucked in the beginning just becomes ordinary and when you take the extraordinary you make it ordinary that's when magical things happen Exactly, exactly. You kind of, um, you took my next question out of my mouth in terms of do you think it's um, the discipline's a grown thing or do you think it's the people are born with it and obviously you think you can develop it? No, I don't think, I, I don't think really anyone's born with, with it. I think that the environment you grow up in, I think that your, the influences around you have a big, big factor in it. Um, and I think that some people are, are privileged and, and lucky enough to be in situations that they're a little bit further ahead or they're going to be exposed to something that, um, puts them a little bit further ahead by the time they hit their teens and they're, you know, into their adulthoods. Definitely, uh, neither of my parents were entrepreneurs and, uh, definitely I've made friends now whose parents were entrepreneurs and they were doing, you know, crazy amounts of things, um, very early on in their teens. Uh, I know a group, uh, uh, called the Maverick Next, um, and, and run by my friend Dimitri. And there's, there's kids in there who are like 19 years of age who have already built multiple, you know, six figure plus companies and, uh, are figuring out how to go even bigger to scale and, you know, people with hundreds of employees and things like that in their teens. And so, so it, although it can, you, you can, you know, be born into it. It's not a gift. It's not something you're born with. It, it's accessible to anyone. And I think the best example of that is, you know, folks who go into the military. Uh, a lot of people go into the military and they're really undisciplined people. A lot of times they're going into the military because there's really not many more options for them. You know, granted, some people do go in for honor and, 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 um, and, and to serve the country. And, and my hat's off to anyone who, who puts themselves in that position. But there is a lot and majority of people who, who do join join the military forces who not necessarily um simply to serve the country and a lot of it a lot of times is out of necessity and uh you know i think it takes a lot of a lot a lot of um you know guts to do that and it's very brave of those people and, but when they're in the military that's where they become disciplined you know they they go through a rigid structure and they become disciplined and and they transform into these uh, amazing uh people that that serve the country and uh put their life on the line um but they're not born with that that's not something a lot of them necessarily grew up necessarily wanting to do um and so you know i've seen it i've seen people turn things around and and just you know finally wake up and realize that hey this is this is available to me if I choose to, number one, take responsibility and, and accept that I am responsible for everything that happens in my life, and number two, you know, do the work that's required. And that's really it. You know, people people just have to take that responsibility and then they have to be willing to do whatever it takes. And the the, the crazy thing is is that you you'll screw up, you'll you'll get off the path, you'll you you know, you'll fall down many times. But it's it's not about it's not about being perfect, right? It's about just keep moving and keep uh, and, and keep take, taking one step after the other. Um, that is what what the successful uh, have in common. Uh, it's not that they you know they're not hitting these home runs uh, coming out of the middle of nowhere. These people are hitting base hits and uh, you know year after year putting in the work and and maybe we hear about them as an overnight success, right? You know, especially some of these app companies and things like that. This they're, they're, they're all of a sudden sell for like a billion. You know um, we don't know anything about them. It seems in the media and then all of a sudden boom, you know. WhatsApp sells for, you know, I think 19 billion or something crazy like that. Um, and, and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? But the thing is, is, you know, how they've been, they were hustling, I think for 18 months or something like that. And I could be off with that. But anyway, they were putting work in 
And I don't believe it was their first attempt at an app and all these different things, right? So that's what I think most people miss is that they can achieve anything they want to achieve. Um, you got to be really realistic about it. Of course, you know, if you're five, five and, and you've never played basketball, chances of going, going to the NBA if you're already in your thirties are slim to none. So you got to be a little realistic with it. But, um, you know, as long as, as long as you understand like what is possible and, and you, you have that belief that you can achieve it, I, I think you can. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. It's um, You're kind of epitomizing what Carol Zweck would describe as a growth mindset, and it's something that's really in my head at the moment. Um, is that something that you've, I'm, I'm assuming you've come across the idea of growth mindsets before, is that something you believe in? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, I, I think that you know, again, it goes back to that, it, like your experiences you have in life, right? And I, I kind of think, I, I often reflect on myself and say, okay, like, a lot of people look at this and they say, okay, well, you're AJ Roberts. And it, and it's like, you know, they don't know the kryptonite essentially, right? It's like they see Superman, but, you know, without the kryptonite. And it's like there's a lot of a lot of things that happened in my life that, that, that could have derailed me or taken me the wrong way. But my, my, my belief and faith in, in my abilities pushed through that. And so where did this growth mindset come from and, and where did this belief and, and passion and, 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 uh, you know, attitude come from? Well, it came from all of the successes that I had throughout my life. You know, um, I was fortunate to, to, um, participate in, in sports and I, and I didn't play, uh, I didn't, I grew up in England, obviously, but I didn't play, uh, you know, soccer, football, which is the most popular sport. Uh, I, I picked basketball and I, and I did that because at a young age, I, I wasn't very good at football. And so I, I, I found I was pretty good at basketball. I was very interested in basketball. I watched it like a lot late night on TV and I started playing basketball and I had a lot of success with that. And I was always on the winning team. And we didn't always win a championship or anything like that, but you know, we had a winning record. And so there was this consistent reinforcement of success and the people around me supported me. My parents supported me. They drove me all over the place to be able to play and to do these things. And, and I, and I was able to do that and have success with that, which then led me to come to the United States and, you know, begin playing over here and then i found you know powerlifting and, and was good at that and that led me down a different path but it was this series of you know from a young age just like i was always doing well at the things i did but a lot of that was because i don't remember the things i didn't do well until i sit down and start thinking about it and i'm like oh yeah i really screwed up here you know this went really bad but it's but i never focused on those losses i think a lot of people have the opposite and, you know, when things go wrong or things go bad, they kind of throw their hands up in the air. They dwell on it too long, you know, and they're reinforced over and over again. And I think about it like, what if I was on a team that lost over and over and over again? Would that passion for basketball had, had remained? Would it have led me to wanting to come to America or would I would I have got, you know, fr basically frizzled out and not been interested in that? And I think that that's when I go back to saying about the environment you're in. I think the people around you are so key when you when you're when especially when you're young because they kind of mold your reality and and then a lot of the times I think a lot of people can can easily access that growth mindset but they have to let go of their reality they have to get let go of the identity they've built around themselves a lot of times they got to let go of the people that are in their lives and that is very difficult to do because it is scary and there's a lot of fear around that and uh, a lot of loss of control if you're in a very safe environment and it really comes down to being comfortable in the uncomfortable and going into that abyss going into the darkness and really you know following following what you feel cool to do inside and i think a lot of people have the voice a lot of people hear a lot of people dream of the growth um that they want to see in their life whether it's physically or whether it's in their business whatever but they won't follow it because they just have this reality that's been set and they they don't know how to shatter it yeah have you always like been able to clearly identify the calling as you mentioned or is it something you've had to actually sit down and think that's what i'd like to do you know i think that's one of the things that um everyone struggles with it's this question of like why am i here 
right? And 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 um, I was just at a, a beautiful conference with Ektok Tolle and, and Deepak Chopra, and you know they were talking a lot about that and, and this desire. And and it's really not the question of why am I here as much as who am I, right? And figuring out who you are. And I think that it's a never ending process, and I think that it's easy to get caught up in it. I think what happens is is that different times in your life you're called to do different things, and a lot of the times it doesn't make sense that you know what your what your what you're hearing the voice inside um you, you know doesn't make sense to you instead of following that voice you're you're quiet in it or you ignore it and and then that leads to the frustration and so what i've really tried to tune into is not so much like what am i here for um because i feel like that's a forever changing like thing um you know, I think at the root of it, humans are basically here for one thing only, and that's reproduction. That's like the essence of being, right, for anything. Um, but I look at that and go, okay, well, it's not just reproduction. It's the betterment of humanity, right? We're here to make this place a better place, to make human, like, make humanity better, to solve world problems that shouldn't be occurring. Um, and so I, I'm like, okay, well, how, how, do, how do I do that, right? Like, those are big big ass like things that take a lot of money and, and a lot of resources. And so it's like, okay, like what can I do to do that on a daily basis? And then who am I? And and if, if me just being me to the best of my ability can inspire, motivate and, and change other people, allow me to lead people, allow me to help people grow their businesses and, 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 you know, access sides of them they never knew then, then that's what I'm going to focus on. And the, that, that voice is going to lead me through that. And, you know, I feel as if the things that happen in your life when there's, you know, uh, 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 big challenges or, or failures, a lot of that is because you were on the wrong path. And in essence, the universe is slapping you back where you need to be in order to reset you and restart you in the right direction again. And um, a lot of the times when we're heading in that right direction, you hear it called flow and you feel as if everything is, you know, it's like this is so easy, right? Should it really be this easy? And then what a lot of people happen is they self-destruct because they don't feel like it should be that easy. Um, and so the, it, it's this, it's this, this cooling is this, you know, following it and staying true to it. And then when you step into that, and everything seems to be going good and everything seems to be effortless and easy and not having guilt and shame around it because, you know, the world has told you you got to be a hustler and you got to work hard and you got to, you know, you should be beating your head against the wall and, and, and like, you know, pushing and, and, you know, going all in and, and all of this stuff. Like a lot of the times once you step into that cooling, things become easy and it's, it's not that you don't work. It's not that things, you know, you don't push. But the the resistance that you had before is gone and the challenges seem to disappear and the right people show up and a lot of people struggle handling that because it just seems too good to be true, right? And as humans, I think we're programmed to think that there's nothing's going to last forever, you know, whether it's happiness or wealth or – in our relationship and so it's really it goes back to just peeling that onion again and stripping away the reality. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense like the things you're saying there – like kind of re really reinforce why you kind of change from being an athlete to going into the business coaching thing is it was it that kind of was it that idea that you had a clear calling at that point or you just felt pulled towards it yeah well, so it's funny i remember having a conversation with louis and saying like i never i'll never leave this place i'm gonna die here right and um you know that was the athlete's mindset and i think that to be a good athlete or to be good at majority of things early in life you have to be very selfish um because there there is decisions that you have to make that if you truly want to be the very best at what it is you're focused on it isn't going to be pleasant to other people in your life you can't always make everyone happy and so you know i think that that's something that you know the shift happens when you realize that you know wait a minute my life isn't about me there is something greater than this. And I think for a lot of people that happens when they have a child, right? When they have a child, I often I, – I don't have any children at this point, but I have you know, uh, brother and sister. They both have children and, and lots of friends having children. And when they have a child, they say to themselves like, you know, my whole life is about that child now. You know, like it, it's like a shift. They just like – it's all of a sudden life isn't about me. It's about this kid. And I look at it like that was the shift I went through 
I, you know, I realized as an athlete, like I achieved what I wanted to achieve and that the, 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 my, my life was no longer, I, I felt like my life was no longer to be th- that, right? And I felt as if now I needed to help other people see see their path and be able to help people realize that they can achieve these things as well. And it was this shift that happened and I tried to ignore it. I tried to be an athlete, but all of a sudden I noted little subtlety, subtleties in my decision making that weren't there before. And I, and I kind of talk about losing my mental edge as an athlete. But that came from this this voice that was saying to me that I needed to to to, to help other people, um, and uh, and being an athlete, being at Westside, all of that like no longer mattered, and so that's when I knew that it wasn't the right place for me anymore. And it was this transition, and I think in terms of sports, you can look at it when an athlete transitions to a coach, right? Um, and then you know going from a coach to like a team owner. And then going from a team owner to like owning a league, right? These are all just natural progressions to help people that are going through those progressions themselves wherever they're at. And so, you know, that's what's been interesting is drawing that comparison to business and, and, and seeing, you know, okay, like when you work in business consumer versus business to business, uh, you know, these are all very different personalities and people you're working with and a lot of people refer to it as consciousness like levels of consciousness and you know spiral dynamics is a great book that breaks that that down a little further but it's really just understanding the avatar and where they are in their journey and and uh, also like joseph campbell's hero's journey you see that referred to as a lot but it's really figuring that stuff out and saying okay like we're all on this journey and we're all at different points in this journey um, and, and, uh, figuring out how can you help people along that path? At least that's what I feel. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you mind talking a bit about, cause you mentioned you, you spent some time with Eckhart Tolle and uh, Deepak Chopra, like obviously spirituality is a big part in your life or is it just the fact that you're clearing your mind? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I grew up in the church and, and I went to church uh, pretty religiously. I was, you know, uh, went, you know, multiple times a week and was involved in different things like that. And um, it's it's like I got to a point where I thought there had to be more. And I almost felt restricted in my spirituality and my faith um, in the setting and environment that I was in. And so I started exploring things outside of my comfort zone. Um and started to see that in reality, and it, and, it, and it talks about this in the Bible, how how God is within you. And so tuning into that voice um, and listening to yourself um, is is one of the first steps. And I, I kind of have this I, – I, I buy into the thought process of one consciousness and how essentially we are all connected. And um, – we were able to tap into that frequency, so to speak. Um, and so my, my journey now is really about trying to remove the, like, the, my, the mind that I control and just allowing, you know, the, this, the voice to come through. And, um, it, it's, it gets really deep and really woo woo but essentially meditation has led me on that journey a lot and basically just, tuning into myself and i think that if most people really stop and think about it um a lot of people when they're driving or maybe in the shower and things like that they're in states of meditation and that's when a lot of their big ideas come to them or they get clarity around things um and and if if you're always rushing around if you're always busy you miss that and so taking time to to tune into that and really really you know ask yourself questions and then allow yourself to get the responses. And, um, you know, I, I'm into this lucid dreaming, um, phase right now where pretty much I can go to sleep with a, with a question on my mind and my whole, my dream cycle will essentially lead me through a process to answer that question. And I wake up with the answer and, you know, I go into my whiteboard and just start downloading everything I was thinking about. But I truly believe that everybody has access to this, um, and probably a lot of people tuning out right now thinking I'm like, just going off the deep end. 
but the the you know it's phrased as spirit spirituality but in reality i believe it's just getting to know yourself better and i think that that really is the essence of our being is is answering that question of who am i when you start stripping away the who am i without my past who am i without my future who am i without my current identity without my accomplishments my awards you know with without the lifestyle that i have like who am i at the core of that and the deeper you go like i said it's like peeling an onion and just when you think you've got down to the to the you know base you find there's another layer and another layer and you just continuously in this evolution and I, and I think that that is a beautiful thing and it's something i look forward to continuing on yeah by all means how did you get into the lucid dreaming i've heard a lot about it but never actually kind of made an approach to get into it yeah so i mean essentially i always had these like weird random dreams i had a lot of like you know stuff going on and i didn't really understand it uh so i just really started just reading about you know dreams essentially and started trying to process my dreams after they happened right just you know what did i dream about okay, write it down and then go look for meaning behind that and so that was the first phase of that and really starting to see the connections of that and it was almost like as i began to figure it out the dreams began to change and i felt as if my mind was trying to tell me stuff and the dreaming was the way it was trying to do that. So I was having repeat dreams. And when I began to get the answers to what those dreams meant, or at least try to figure it out and start to like, you know, reflect on it and think about it, the dream began to change. And I started thinking, well, maybe if I go to go to bed with intention, and that's really something I learned through meditation, you know, going into a meditation with intention versus going into just meditation, meditative state very different experiences and so uh, a friend of mine had mentioned lucid dreaming and said sounds like you're you know you're you're close to this lucid dreaming stuff and so again i just did some research on it and just really just started to to go to bed with intention and really think about okay what do i want to think about tonight and it just began to happen and uh you know it, it was this process i believe that the first step was just beginning to tune into those dreams and then almost beginning to set my mind on a course so that it could navigate itself um while, while i was uh, asleep um you know which is which is an interesting concept that is so cool i'm gonna have to start checking that out um do you mind if i go into five questions that i ask everyone i think your uh, your answers would be really interesting so what does it mean to you to be alpha <laughs> you know, I, this question comes up a lot because when I talk about meditation, I talk about, you know, being being mindful and at ease. A lot of people go, well, what, well, what about being alpha? Right. Yeah. And I honestly think that the the essence of alpha alpha is control is yeah. is ultimate emotional control. And I think that that comes when you are able to to kind of tune into the new brain right we have the lizard brain which is the original brain um and then then we then we have that um i think it's the ma mammosin or something like that which is the second brain which is the second brain that evolved around the lizard brain and then we have the new brain right and so that new brain is it has to in order for it to function you have to the lizard brain which is fight or flight response essentially which is the the epicenter of emotion for you know anger fear joy sadness like that triggers right and we go into fight fight or flight and when we have no control over that that's when we're the least powerful right and to have control over that right because you're always going to get triggered but it's when you're training that and instead of being, you know, reflex, you know, having reflex re reactions, you're able to control that, process it, you know, experience it, let it go without disruption around you. That's true alpha. And I always think the most deadly person is, it, you know, if you were if you were looking at two guys in a bar, right, and one guy's banging his chest and yelling, he's a big dude, like scary. But the guy you got to watch for is the guy that walks up to him, whispers in his ear, and then walks away. And that, that the look on that guy's face is stone cold because he realizes that, you know, if if he doesn't knock it off, he's about to get his ass whooped. The silent power is is the ultimate alpha for me. Do you reckon there's a fear of being vulnerable that prevents people from 
um, being comfortable with this kind of spirituality side of things. Oh, absolutely. I think that that's the, you know, everyone is so focused on what everyone else thinks about them um, that they forget that everyone else is also thinking about what everyone else thinks about them. Yeah, right? yeah. No one is focused on the other person because they're too worried about thinking about themselves. And it's a fascinating phenomenon because people truly believe that they have to show up a certain way in order to, you know, get respect or be understood and those kind of things. And, and, and if you if you look at it, you know, self-love, self-respect, all of these qualities that the people who are who are, you know, the most most idolized or the most powerful people tend to have the highest forms of self-discipline, self-love, self, self-respect, self right? They don't care about what everyone else thinks. They're free from fear, right? And and these are the people we admire the most, but there's this boundary there because we're, we're taught from an early age like that, that, you know, even like if you fall over and cry, it's like, knock that off, you know, like, yeah, like be tough, be strong, da, da, da. So it's like, a, it, it's seen as a weakness. Emotion is seen as a weakness. And so the vulnerability in it is this fear that, you know, I'm exposing myself, my, my, my biggest, deepest, darkest secrets, and I'm going to be judged for that. And we're taught in an early age, you know, through trauma or whatever, that is the reality that we focus on. So if something happened to us at a young age, you know, we fell over and hurt ourselves, and then we got yelled at for not being tough enough, right? We start to suppress those emotions. And so when we become a, 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 an, an adult, we still operate as an adolescence because we are, we are, you know, operating from those, from those stored emotions. Uh, and that's what a lot of people have to let go of in order to be able to fully express themselves and fully come through. And it, it's a tough journey for people because you, you do have to get vulnerable and you have to cry and you have to, you know, you have to dig into these painful emotions that you've suppressed and you've stored and that you're not even thinking about. And uh, again, you know, the deeper you go, the more free you're able to be. And, and I think that that is, a, a, is something that a lot of people won't ever start that journey because it's just too far from their reality and the thought process that they can let go of this bravado and this toughness and this this attitude that they have, you know, this like fuck the world attitude and like to let go of that is to step into an unknown, is to let go of their identity. And a lot of people, it's just something they'll never, never be able to do, unfortunately. But, you know, people who listen to podcasts and listen to interviews and, 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 and absorb this kind of information, I feel like they're, they know that there's something beyond them, and so they're more likely to do that. And that's what, what why I love giving these these interviews. Yeah, a hundred percent. And uh, we love having you on as well, AJ. Um, what you might recognise this this question from Tim Ferriss show. What do your clients and friends consider you world class at? <laughs> uh, so I, I've been asking this a lot over the years. You know, I I got I got really you know essentially famous for being strong. And then in the business world for, for being a world class marketer. And, uh, as we've dug into this, you know, really it's strategy. It's, it's being able to zoom out, right? Take what someone has, show them the bigger picture and then chunk it down so they can see the paths to get there. And essentially it's the same process I've used for every goal I've ever set. You know, dreams become goals, goals become, you know, actions. And, um, you know, I have this innate ability to really extract the greatness that are within people. Um, and, and a lot of times I can see it before they see it because I, I just have this intuition and this feeling. And I, and when I sit down with someone and, and chat with them, um, you know, I, I can, I can sense that there's something there and then I'll go to work on pulling it out of them. And then once I got it out, then it's about showing them how they how the possibility of getting there. And uh, it, it's a skill set that, you know, few and far between are able to, to master. But it's something that I now that I know that that's kind of where my magic is, is on the strategy side of things and, and working with with high level entrepreneurs and CEOs on really taking themselves and their, their lives and their business, et cetera, you know, to that next level. Like I, now I'm f able to you know, th throw fuel on the fire and start digging in and, and figuring out processes and, and, you know, ways to, to enhance that. So, um, you know, this is all, this is, you know, something that it, it's like, it's, it's like the light bulb went off 
probably probably about a year ago and and they're constantly refining and and i refer to it as like unique genius and i i I think everyone has that and i think it's again it's one of those evolving processes right like you you you'll figure out your unique genius and then you realize that it's maybe not that whole thing it's a little bit you know it's a piece of that and you keep drilling down until you get to that one thing that you really do do better than anyone else in, in your world perfect what a skill to have as well um what three things do you do or what are the three most important things you do every day for your health so first every day i go for a walk in the morning and uh it's about, it's about an hour 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 and a half walk along the beach and um you know th- that has obviously it has the cardiovascular benefits to it but it's it's also an opportunity where i throw in an audio book so i'm able to get through uh, pretty much right now i'm i'm, I'm tracking a, a book every 2 days on audio book um and i like to read as well physical books but the audio books you know i'm able to go through really really fast get lots of ideas and concepts and and that starts to trigger thought processes in the morning right and so oftentimes I'll pause and I'll be, you know, taking notes and, and things. But, you know, really just in the morning, creating that space for myself where I'm on my own and I'm able to think and I'm in, a, in an environment that, you know, it's grounding to be walking along the beach, right, to be out in nature. So, so I'm out in, in, you know, to me, the beach is the most beautiful thing. Some people like the mountains, et cetera, like some people are city folk, whatever. Um, but that's, that's the first thing I do to start my day. And then the, the, the second thing is really fueling the body with healthy, f- healthy foods. Um, you know, as I've become more busy, it's been difficult to, to really stay on top of that. And so I, I, I employ, uh, I have a meal prep company. Um, that I use that basically builds my meals off my macros. And so I'm able to, you know, get everything timed right and, and just grab those and go. But fueling the body is essential, especially for discipline. Willpower is, is really, um, you know, a, a limited thing that we have. And so the more decisions we have to make and, and whatnot, the, the weaker that willpower is. And so with food, you know, blood sugar levels as well is, you know, if those drop and you're not getting the right foods and you're not, not nourishing the body, your decision making skills go down. So eating the right things is super important. And then the last thing I would say that's essential to health is, is create for, for, for me is, is creating um, recovery time. Right. Um, and that's just time where you are actually resting and recovering and actually turning the mind off your 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 focus is away from from all of the, the the noise right and i get a lot of that through meditation but i know guys who get massages on on a regular basis or they go to a movie you know on their own just to zone out or they maybe binge watch netflix whatever and you got to create that recovery space right in order to be able to keep pushing and i think that's something that most people they wait they push they push they push and they wait and then they hit a wall and and then they just you know they go into that drift or, or, or that zone of not wanting to do anything um, for a long period of time. Whereas if you build that into your daily schedule, you know, you, you, you sweat every day, you, you, you feed your body right every day, and then you re- rest and recover every day and you create space, get enough sleep, you know, create and, and also creating space to recover. Those three things are what allow you to, you know, wake up every day and push with passion and purpose um, and, and not burn out. Yeah, 100%. Um, what's the most important book you've ever read? Or Man, I, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a huge book reader. Um, you know, honestly, I, I'm going to go back to like some of the early books that I read because I feel like they set the foundation that 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 has, um, you know, pushed me in my journey. But, you know, Think and Grow Rich is a huge book um, that I think everyone should have. Um, think and grow rich, how to win friends, uh, and influence people. Uh, it's another one. And then, uh, cyber psych, cyber cybernetics, um, is, is the other one. Those three were like three of the first business books I kind of read. Um, and it's funny because, you know, as an athlete, I didn't recognize a lot of things I did that successful people did. And those three books really started to explain things. Um, and, and I started to lead me on that journey. And within those books, there's probably another 50 books you could get from them. So, um, you know, for, for people who aren't big book readers, those would be the three that I would, would start with. Now, if you're a big book reader and you read a lot of books, um, I would say 
uh, Peter Diamandis book, Bold and Abundance, are two must-haves for any big thinkers. And then there's a book called Moonshot, um, and by uh, John uh, Scully, um, and, and that's a great book as well. Okay, sweet man. And if you had one message that you could tell the world, what would it be? Man, whew. yeah, big question. That's a that's a, that's a, that's a big question. Um, you know, honestly, like I look at it like this: like life is so short. And we don't know when it's going to end, right? We assume that we're going to live this long, you know, great life and, and there's always time. But the reality is, is that, you know, some of us, like, we don't know when the, when, when it, when it's going to be the end. And, you know, I've had a couple of friends pass from cancer or just unex, un, unexpected. And, you know, the, the sad thing is, is that today could be your last day. And so the question to ask yourself is, if I died today, you know, would I be proud of what they would say to me at my eulogy? And if the answer is no, then then the message is, is like, what are you going to do to change that? And for me, like I look at it like that's why I live my life the way I live it. And that's why I push the way I push. And that's why I try to achieve the things I try to achieve and and go as hard as I go, it's because when I, when I, when it's all said and done, you know, I want, I want people to remember me as someone who, who, who went all that in and everything I did to try to better humanity and change the world. And regardless of whether I achieve that or not, I know I've done everything possible in order to do that. And I think that's the key. And so, you know, even if someone's goal was just to be the best father they can be, you know, if they pass tomorrow, would your kids consider you that? And if the answer is no, what do you need to do today to change that? It doesn't have to be a change the world mindset. You know, it could be the best partner, the best husband, wife, like whatever. Like, but the question is, is if I go tomorrow or go right now, would that person believe that? Or would they say that about me? And again, if the answer is no, what do I need to do to change that? And that is, that is what motivates and drives me so hard is so that when I when I'm gone, I know I'm proud of what what people would say about me, you know, and I and I hope that that is true for everyone. And so, you know, that's really, I guess, you know, that's what came to mind. So that was what was on my heart. So hopefully it helps someone out there. That is the best answer we've had to that question so far. So thank you for that. Um, before we wrap things up, is there any way um, people can find out a bit more about you? Yeah, easiest thing to do is just go to ajroberts.com. Okay, sweet. Nice and simple. No Facebook plugs or anything like that. <laughs> well, I'm AJ Roberts on Facebook and Instagram, and I'm on Snapchat and all that fun stuff, but you'll, you'll find it all through the website. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Right, um, I can't thank you enough for this. I think I got through the whole thing without like pushing on hero worship, so thank you for coming on. Um, I really can't appreciate your time enough. Uh, my pleasure, Tom. What a phenomenal episode. I've listened to this multiple times already just because there's so much stuff in there. When you're actually doing the interview, you don't necessarily able to take notes and stuff like that. So having having this resource here is just such a cool thing to have. If you want to find out more about the Alpha Movement, you can obviously find us on facebook.com slash alpha movement official or you can head to our website which is www.alphamovement.co.